Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about something that's a pretty uh, hot topic uh, in my inbox, which is uh, how do I distort the face inside of Spark AR? Well, it's actually pretty easy and it's actually built into Spark AR. So there isn't a whole lot that you're going to be needing to do um, from a 3D modeling standpoint. So you don't have to do anything weird other than just kind of save a few things and import them into your project. So um, again, this is all built right into the software. Um, it's a little bit hidden, but 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 uh, but it's easy to get to. And once you understand the concepts of what you're doing, it allows you to get other things out of Spark AR as well. So let me show you how to do this and then you can be on your way. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Spark. Okay, so you see all these tutorials that open up when you first open. I would suggest going through each and every one of these tutorials. They're super helpful. They go step by step. They show you how everything works from face tracking to 3D animation to some slight physics based um, uh, patch editing. Um, and then really getting into kind of the 2D effects with the with the zooming and, and, um, and like this layering down here with this with this holiday photo. But we're going to be talking today about face distortion and look at this right over here. There's one called face distortion. So let's just go ahead and open this one up. And uh, and then it's going to start off with the tutorial. We don't need the tutorial for this, but I would suggest going through it just so you understand how everything works. Uh, the Spark AR team takes a lot of time to put these together. Um, and they're super, super, super helpful. So if you don't understand how this stuff works, please go through this tutorial. Today, we're gonna talk about how to use this tutorial for your project. So that's what we're gonna start with. So I'm gonna assume you've already gone through this. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna save this somewhere so we can actually make this sample project um, a reality uh, somewhere on our, um, on our computer. So let's just go ahead and save it. And we can save it whatever we want to. I'm going to save it with a couple um, uh, exclamation points just so it appears at the top of my folder list for ease. So I've gone ahead and I've saved this. I know where it's saved. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now let's pretend I just started. I've just started a brand new project, right? I want to do some face deformation. So I'm going to go file, new project, start off like I usually do. Perfect. I get to see this wonderful woman down here doing her face nods and her smiles, always greeting me every time I open the software. I've gotten to know and love this person. I don't know um, if she's nice or not, but in my head, she's kind of a motherly figure. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to take that motherly figure and we're going to blow her eyeballs out of her head. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to do insert face mesh. Perfect. So you can see this face mesh is wrapped onto her face like it usually is. But you'll notice this little guy over here that says deformation with a plus sign. Now you might have noticed this before and wondered what the hell do I put into this little box here? Well, you can see up here that it's actually asking for an object. And the way that deformation works essentially is they give you a face mesh. Spark AR gives you a face mesh, which you can actually get to by going to up here to going to help and then going to get face reference assets. If you do that, it will ask you where to save them and then will dump them out onto your desktop or onto wherever you save them. And then you can actually use, see what the face mesh is that they wrap around your face. You can then take that face mesh, pull it into something like Blender, distort the crap out of it, keep all your vertices and everything the same, but you distort it and then you can import it back in and use it as a deformation object. Pretty cool, right? So if you ha don't have Blender, that's another good way to get started, and that's also free software, but we're not gonna talk about that today. Today we're just gonna talk about how to use the already created version of this. Well, the good news is, is we saved our file. You can see it right here, face distortion. This is our project file that we saved earlier. Here's a folder called objects. Inside of that is the face distortion pack, and look at that. There is our wonderful object that allows us to distort our face. So we're going to give this a second. It does take a bit of a second to, for it to load, and then it will kind of pop into view. There it goes. So you'll see immediately you have so many options over here. And you can see as I change them, her eyes will scale out and get bigger, and you can push her eyeballs out of her head. You can scale her nose out, make it big, push it out, right? Make her mouth big, make the chin big. Whoa, getting really wild with it. Now there's something else you can do with this too. Now let's say the nose scale is one. You can actually make this a negative one and pinch it in on itself. So even though the sliders don't do this, you can actually make the slider, you can make this value whatever you want to. 
So you can make the eye smaller as well. So it doesn't have to just stop at one and go up. Um, that is the easiest way. So you want to always set these back to one or set them back to zero uh, to, to get the, uh, to, whoops, to get the, uh, to get everything set back to, to regular. So, oops, I got a little crazy there at the end. But regardless, you get the concept here. Um, you want to pull that face mesh in and you want to apply that deformation object that we saved to it from the previous session um, of Spark AR. So you can do this with almost any one of those project files. Go ahead and open them up, save them, and then go into the folder structure and see how they work. You'd be pretty amazed to see what kind of stuff you could find in there. So um, it's really helpful. This is a really, really great way to start. It's a good way to understand how blend shapes work. Uh, because you already have something that pre-exists and it gives you something to start with and doesn't feel like you're kind of flying blind. Um, and you can use this in your project. So anytime you want to make some big eyes, nothing to it. Look at that. We can already make our eyes big and we can actually make them uh, really big if we want to and get really crazy with it. So um, you can put, again, whatever values you want to in here. You can see that they're already pretty extended. So um, Pretty cool effects, pretty easy way to do some face manipulation. And from there, uh, you could really do uh, whatever whatever you want. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has taught you something a little bit about, one, uh, how blend shapes work mostly, but also um, how to use Spark AR and those tutorials to your benefit, because they are there for a reason. Um, again, this team took some time to put these together and, and really um, revamp these uh, from, from what I started when I very first started with Spark AR, um, these were non-existent. So to see this come this far and have these uh, these wonderful people give you these tools um, to help you on your way has been a uh, really, really great thing to uh, to be able to share with people as they also begin their journey because it's like, hey, did you know that, that, that this stuff already is here? So I hope that helps um, have fun developing things and until uh, next time.